Today, we're just going to get right into it as your favorite talking head does his best to keep his promise. That's right. Your favorite talking head read another book. This time, it's called I Am Homeless If This Is Not My Home by Lori Moore. And it just came out, and I suggest to go out to read it. Hi, I'm your host, Chris Humphrey. And if it looks like i am become a teenager again because i got a massive zit on my head, a blemish, I apologize. It's about to pop, I hope. Because this is, what, six days in a row. You should have seen it last week. Oh, my God. I need a Dr. Pierpont Popper. But back to the task at hand. We have the lovely I Am Homeless If This Is Not My Home by the Lori Moore. And she seems to be a fan favorite because she's very wordy and very uh, crafty with her words. Uh, And I didn't know. And this is the first time I've ever read uh, her book. And I fell in love with it uh, right away. What people aren't going to like is the, because I always like to say what people aren't going to like first, is that it takes a while for you to understand what is actually happening. And then if you go online, you'll read different people's opinions on what they think is actually happening. They try and sell this as a bit of a ghost story. And that is where, in my mind, I'm still debating on whether it actually is or not. Really, it's a deep personal story, and uh, some people aren't going to like that because, I don't know. I really don't know why, but I read some of the uh, reviews, and I was like, do people not read the same book? Uh, That's neither here nor there. Everybody has their own opinion. But it does take a while to get to what actually happens, and then when it does, it actually makes uh, sense. So I'm trying to block out my give you my side view to block out this massive zit basically what the story is is it's about uh, two intertwining stories uh, together it's about a man by the name of finn who um, is unfortunately a conspiracy theorist who believes the moon landing was faked which a lot of people do for whatever reason and he has to go visit his dying brother in a hospice because that's normally what you do. Um, and then you have a, a intertwining story done through letters about a lady taking care of her sister and, or not taking care of her sister, but writing to her sister and all that. And you're trying to find out what actually connects the two. And then at the end, it went where it should have went. And my mind was going crazy because I thought it was something more. Back to Finn's story, he's grieving because he lost the love of his life, which would happen. Now, they try and say that this is a a ghost story. In reality, it's a human story. Uh, And I mean that with the other sense that uh, as humans, we tend to grieve differently, right? I'm sure animals, uh, the same thing. But as humans, and men in particular, sometimes we don't like to talk about it. Or if we do, it's in our head. And then if we do uh, talk about it outside, then we're labeled as gay or crazy or stupid or weird, right? Men tend to hide themselves uh, inside and become conspiracy theorists. This is the best way to describe it. But... uh, what this book really is, is it gets down to the uh, grief and the raw and dirtiness of grief and how a different person would uh, deal with such grief. And that's where I really like this book. So I didn't like that it took a while to get to where it's going and to see some action. But when it got there, it was beautiful, very poetic. Uh, I liked that she was very choosy with her words and very wordy. Uh, sent some very beautiful sentences that I couldn't help uh, but laugh, especially when she's describing Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> so I think it was an old cricket bat uh, with the sad spaghetti. It makes sense if you've ever been to uh, Tennessee, uh, Knoxville. Uh, but it's very good, very clever. Some people don't like wordy books. Okay. From what I understand, this is just how she writes, and I think it's brilliant. I think it's very funny. Also, for me, I guess grief is a a little different. We all grief differently. I like to get inside my head, write it out, read it out, and do that. And not a lot of people are like that. But what 
I really like is that she has a very dark, dry sense of humor. And that always goes well. This would be a book. Uh, this would be a book that my uncle, who unfortunately uh, took his own life, because that's how it goes, would have probably sat down and loved this book and read it repeatedly. Uh, because this would be the kind of book he would like, other than fantasy and and imaginative stuff. This would be the grief book that he would do because he was a sick and dark, twisted individual, and I miss him like crazy. Uh, he's the reason why I probably read uh, a lot. But I think that's why I liked it a lot. Uh, I, I'm seeing a lot of people saying they did not finish because that's how it is. I'm going to be honest with you. If I don't like a book, I put it aside for about an hour, take a break, go out for a walk, go out for a run, do something to clear my head. Usually if I don't like the way a book is going, it's probably because there's something going on in here. With that being said, I honestly think people should pick up a book, read it from start to finish, and then form an opinion. Because if you say DNF on a book, that just tells me uh, you didn't have the patience to read it. And reading is an art as much as it is to read uh, read uh, Laurie Moore's uh, masterpiece of a book. Um, I know everybody waits to the bitter end, and I know you're sick of looking at this ugly zit. I'm going to give this what it deserves. I'm going to give this a, a lovely uh, 8 out of 10. I think you should uh, definitely go out and uh, get it and pick it up because it just came out. I think it's one of the better books of this year. You can see where I put it on my list. You can see it's getting crammed uh, as we say goodbye to another one from the top five. But I want you to go out and read it. Form your own opinion. Let me know if you like her style, if you like her word choices, if you like her sense of humor, because essentially she's a comedian. If I was a big time comedian, I would 100% try and hire her to write some of my scripts or my lines because uh, she, I think she's very good and I'm de more depressed that I didn't know who she was until I got this book. Please tell me how you feel about me down below. Tell me how you feel about the zit. Tell me what you think of the book. If I don't see you again, you know what I'm going to say. Good to Morgan, good to Nobden, and good to Knock. Ciao. Producer, hit the music, baby.